Hi, we're at uh, uh, the Standing Committee on Copyright of the World Intellectual Property Organization in Geneva. It's, it's July 24th. Tomorrow is the last day of a, a 10 day negotiation on copyright limitations and exceptions. I'm here with uh, Victoria from the uh, Can it's uh, well from the FIAB. I was just wondering if you could start out by introducing yourself to the readers. Tell them a little bit about yourself, who you are, uh, uh, who you who you work for, and who you represent here today, and why you're in Geneva. <laughs> so my name is Victoria Owen. I'm Canadian. I am here with the International Federation of Library Associations, and I'm also uh, here with the Canadian Library Association. So the uh, international, so I'm a librarian, and I work at the University of Toronto Scarborough. I'm the head librarian at that campus. I am here in Geneva to um, talk about libraries and archives and exceptions for copyright for libraries and archives. So, uh, what what got you interested in the, in the field of intellectual property rights? Well, I was a librarian in a National Library for the Blind in 1993, so I worked there for over a decade, and copyright became part of my portfolio, so I became very interested in copyright in that application. So it was a, a very, in, in the realm of copyright, it's a narrow application, so it was for, uh, to provide access to the people who are visually impaired, print disabled, um, to alternate format to material, to material for lifelong learning for education. And so I built, I was in charge of the collections and all of the library service at that library for the blind. So I became very interested in, in areas of access, in copyright, how it applies, what it means in terms of access for the Canadians that I serve, but also in terms of, because there's small communities around the world and we're a national library organization, it, by its very nature, has an international tone. So we became involved with other national libraries and you start working at the international level and understand how those different regimes fit together. So that opened the door of interest and then it just grew from there, it became sort of an unquenchable thirst to, to learn more and to see how it applied to libraries in all aspects because I moved out of libraries for the blind and went to academic libraries so it has it's it's a very pertinent and important topic in the print world and even more so in the digital environment because it's a changing environment um, do, do you feel in, in, in working with libraries that um, uh, it's easier or difficult to conclude licensing agreements or uh, negotiate prices for collections and including the ability to share them across borders, that kind of thing. Well, it's an interesting combination of contract and national laws. We try to ensure that the national laws are not overridden by contract. So we try to ensure that there are statements in, you know, in, in the, at the beginning of the contract that states that nothing will, um, will derogate from the limitations and exceptions that are available for that country. And then also in the representational warranties at the end of the um, contract, we have to make sure what we sign for up front isn't somehow taken away at the back end. So I think you have to be, you have to read your documents, you have to understand what it is, what the provisions are in the law, and up to what extent they, they are in the law, and then you have to make sure that your contracts don't override your statutory rights. So, so it is, um, it, it, it's, a, it's, a nuance, it's a nuance and it is an area where people need to um, develop knowledge and interest in understanding how to optimize the, the statutory rights of our users and also to, you know, to negotiate those licenses properly. So you're here in Geneva, you're, you're um, a long ways from home and uh, you're, here, you're here to work on I believe a treaty for uh, at WIPO on that deals with libraries and possibly archives. I was wondering if you could explain uh, 
you know, for people that don't, have not heard about this or don't know about this project, what, what it is you're trying to accomplish with this treaty proposal? Um, the International Federation of Library Associations is looking at making a, uh, creating a basic standard of exceptions and limitations for libraries and archive so that we have a, a, a foundation of, of understanding and knowledge in all of our laws around the world that give us a, 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 a foundation, a floor, not a ceiling of how we operate together, how we're able to lend materials, how we're able to provide access, when we can copy, how we preserve our cultural heritage, how we can work through contracts, just as I mentioned with contracts, how we need to manage contracts so they don't override statutory rights, so that we have we can provide the kinds of access to our um, users, our clients, be they the pub in the public libraries, in um, academic libraries, in, in any kind of library, so that they can have access to uh, the world's knowledge and also that we can preserve the world's knowledge. So those are essentially, that's what we're trying to accomplish, so that there are many countries around the world that don't have limitations and exceptions, and it's a, it's a path to development, it's a path to um, the ability for people to have, to provide a, a, a level of, of access to knowledge for all of its citizens. Um, just in terms of the question of why it's a treaty, I assume that all these different countries could, on their own initiative, pass laws that would provide these limitations and exceptions for libraries. So could you just, and I know you touched upon this, but if you could elaborate a bit more on why a treaty would be something that would be helpful from the point of view of the libraries in achieving these outcomes that you have at the national level, as opposed, for example, of having countries just uh, enact them uh, uh, without a treaty? Well, I think it becomes a patchwork, and so um, if you don't have the same understanding with uh, libraries around the world, you, you're not able to fulfill, you're not able to exchange things in the same way. You would have different laws on cross-border, you'd have different laws on exor and exhaustion and importation, so that you wouldn't be able to provide a seamless access to knowledge and, and bring in um, materials and, and knowledge content from around the world. So I think it, it's a kind of, it's a, we're, we're allowing at a minimum, at a basic minimum, that libraries and archives from around the world would speak the same language, would have the same kinds of statutory rights for their libraries, for their, for their libraries to operate and, and to provide access and to preserve their cultural scientific heritage. Uh, when I talk to the publishers, they're uh, pretty negative about the idea of a treaty on copyright limitations and exceptions for libraries. Have you, have you uh, observed this in your own I think work on this. we observe it. I think they're trying they're trying to defend their own interests. They're not looking at the public interest. I think for the most part libraries and archives are in the shoes of the public. They represent the public interest when we bring the negotiations to this level. And um, the publishers are looking at a definite, sort of narrow um, specific interest and in self-interest in their industry and it's it's normal it's it's understandable I, it's not a criticism it's an observation but certainly that's the role of libraries and copyright is a is a balance it's a it's a, in in most of the certainly in the parliament of canada it was for um, the protection but also the provision of access so always in the in the drafting of the original copyrights this this was the balance so this is what we're trying to maintain in the digital environment, that there are uh, exceptions and limitations so that people can have still have this access to information and knowledge through their, through their libraries. Well, uh, l let me ask you a couple of um, uh, questions, and I would just, if, if you could just give me short answers to them, then I get, I get more questions in. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. There's a subtext there. <laughs> well, you know a lot, and uh, <laughs> we're not going to get everything covered in this interview anyhow, so uh, I, I apologize for that, but uh, just because of the length. But um, um, do you think that the treaty that you've proposed would require changes in the Canadian law? Until fairly recently, no, but recently, yes. We have a new uh, bill. 
Bill C-11 that has uh, introduced some changes to our legislation. Certainly we have technological protection measures, so digital locks um, are not. There isn't a provision right now in the, the document that's there on um, removing the locks for non-infringing uses. So we need to have that sorted out. And also I think there are some restrictions on cross-border use for materials that have been created for the people with perceptual disabilities in Canada. So there are some additional, um, I think on, um, although we, we, we try to uh, to share our knowledge and our, with, the, with the government before the law was drafted, just in terms of some technical um, changes, how it might not be so difficult for people with print disabilities to navigate, but um, we'll just see what we can do with uh, regulations and how we might change it and to get to make it more workable. How's the uh, how's the Canadian delegation been at WIPO on your proposal? The library's proposal. Well, the library, the proposal, the SCCR. 238 provisional is is I think it was received today as a document and will be uh, has been amended. So I think there is um, there is consensus that it's going forward, and I think Canada joins that consensus. Okay, so uh, uh, have you talked to Canadian delegate uh, to I wipe this one? And uh, I've been uh, well at every meeting I've been to, we've had a discussion uh -huh. with the Canadian delegates and certainly we do preparatory meetings both at their initiative and at our own initiative before uh, we come to uh, these what, World Intellectual Property Organization meetings. So who, who represents Canada at this meeting? Well there is um, one delegate here uh, who's been here and then I think there's another delegate from the permanent mission who is also uh, responsible and, and does come. And, and uh, what, what are their jobs? Do they come from uh, Canada to attend the well, meeting? One of them is coming from Canada and one is coming from the permanent mission. And what, what part of the Canada, Canadian government do they come from? Um, they come from, this, the one that I've spoken to today comes from Canadian Heritage. Canadian Heritage, and that's, that's the uh, part of Canada that manages copyright, is that? Well, there are, uh, there are a number of ministries that do. <laughs> Canadian Heritage and Industry Canada both have. Um, have responsibility for that portfolio. So do you think that Canada will have a librarian on its delegation at any point when they talk about libraries? They may. I think, uh, um, and you're, you're, a, you're a lawyer and a librarian yourself, right? No, I'm a librarian with a law degree, <laughs> not a lawyer. <laughs> I'm not sorry, a librarian. in the United States, I, I would call everyone with a law degree a lawyer, but uh, no, not in Canada. No. I'm sorry. That's all right. Uh, library. Well, listen, is there anything you'd like to add before we conclude the interview? And thank you very much, by the way. Well, thank you for uh, your interest, and uh, I'm very hopeful about the future of limitations and exceptions for libraries and archives at, uh, in this venue. Thank you. <laughs>